Hello and welcome to Caveo Bite Size Learnings. Today's topic is the implementation of index pipeline extensions in Coveo Cloud V2 using metadata discovery as our example task. Coveo Bite Size Learnings are as short as they are sweet, so let's get started. Within our Coveo Cloud V2 org, we have several sources, including a sitemap source used to index a small number of Wikipedia pages covering topics related to technologies used by Coveo. If we look at the contents of that source in our content browser, we see the listings for index documents, and in the properties view, we can see, among other things, the list of metadata fields associated with each document. While there's a nice range of metadata there, I suspect there are some additional fields which might be useful on some of the documents. To capture available metadata which is not already accounted for in the out-of-the-box mapping, we'll need to create an index pipeline extension script. In our documentation, we have several sample scripts pre-built to illustrate how extensions work, including one for just this purpose. To find them, go to search.coveo.com and search for Index Pipeline Extension Samples. You'll see the code for this operation there, as well as some installation instructions similar to what we are walking through here. Please note that Index Pipeline Extensions are somewhat resource intensive and should only be applied where necessary to avoid performance impacts. Additionally, this specific script is great for metadata discovery, but in some cases can grow the size of your index up to five times the volume. As such, once you've done your discovery task, you will want to disable the script. That said, metadata discovery is a useful enough tool that we will continue by copying the code in question. Then going back to our Coveo org, choosing the extensions menu, then we can click the add extension button You'll need to give the extension a name and, optionally, a description. In some cases, you'll want to request access to specific areas of the Coveo item being created and inserted into the index. But since we are not looking to modify the content, nor quick view, nor anything else, we can leave those unchecked. In the script panel, we'll paste our code. Because we copied it from a web page, some leading blank spaces are filled with placeholder characters, so we will get rid of those being careful to keep appropriate indentation. Please note, index pipeline extension scripts are written in Python. Python uses syntactic spacing, meaning that code blocks are defined by their level of indentation rather than using curly braces or other delimiters, which you may be familiar with in other languages. While the editor will try to do the right thing when it can, there is no way for it to know the details of your code's logic. And as such, if you're not familiar with the Python language, you'll want to be extra careful with your code formatting. Simply put, what this code does is grab all of the available metadata and then dump it as a JSON text object into a field called All Metadata Values. We'll go ahead and save the script, and looking in the Activity Browser, we can see that it's there. Going to the Fields menu, we can see that there is no All Metadata Values field, so we'll go ahead and create it, so the script's output will have a place to go. We'll set its type to String, and set it up as a search operator, so that we can do field queries against it. Clicking Add Field, we can see it in the list. Now to actually link the extension to the source. We don't currently have the tools to do this within the Coveo Cloud Administration Console's user interface, but the API is exposed and accessible easily through our Swagger-based documentation. To reach this documentation, visit platform.cloud.coveo.com slash docs. If we look at the extensions API, we'll see a number of options, but there is not one to attach it to the source. So let's look at the source API. Within this section, in the Source Extension subset, there is indeed an option to set extensions on a source. If we expand it, we see that it requires an organization ID, a source ID, and an object in JSON describing the extension to be attached. Let's go ahead and get all the information we need. Going to the Platform API and expanding the Organizations section, you'll see a call which allows you to retrieve all the orgs that you own. Expand it and authenticate, and since there are no required parameters, you can just click Try It Out and you'll get a list of orgs. Most clients accessing this will have just one or two orgs. I've got a few, but the one we want is the first name, last name one. 
I'll copy its ID and put it in a notepad file. Once we have the org ID, we can go to the source API and using the org ID, we can get a list of our sources. The one I want is the sitemap one called the Coveo Wiki. I'll grab its ID and put that in my notepad as well. Finally, in the extensions API, we can get a list of available extensions and grab the ID of the one we just created. With all of this information collected, we can go back to the source API, expand the source extensions, and use the option to set an extension on a source. We'll paste the organization and source IDs into the form, and since I'd like to capture the data as soon as the source has been modified, we'll go ahead and set the rebuild option to true. The extension information is potentially more complicated than just an ID, so it has to go in as a JSON object. You can click on the model, to pre-populate the text area field with the sample boilerplate, and then go in and remove everything that is not necessary. We are inserting our script as a post-conversion extension, and in this case, all we need is the ID and the parameter list, even though that list is empty. When modifying your JSON, please take care to ensure that you're keeping the syntax correct. If you don't, you'll get an error, and you'll have to go back and find the error. In this case, we just need to remove the trailing comma from the list, resubmit, and we're good to go. Looking at the activity browser, we can see the extension update and the source rebuild pending in the queue. In a short while, these tasks will be complete and will be marked as such in your activity browser. We can also validate that the extension is configured on the source by going to the sources list and choosing the option to edit the JSON configuration file for the source we've been working on. If you recall, we added our script as a post-conversion extension, so we'll search for postcon, and we can see our extension ID listed as appropriate in the JSON. Going into the content browser and viewing the properties of one of the items in the source, we can see our all metadata field populated. This item has mostly standard metadata, which is likely already indexed. In my sitemap file, though, I know I set up some custom metadata for a few of our documents. Looking at the properties for one of those customized items, I see that we have a latitude, a longitude, custom tags, and a custom error message. I think I want to capture that error message, so I'll go into the fields editor and create a field by that name and make sure it's a search operator for field queries and that it's displayable in results. From there, I'll go to my source's mapping configurations and add a mapping for my new field such that any item that I'm indexing which contains that field will automatically be saved to that index item. We can see that my configuration change and the rebuild are queued up. And when they're done, we can go back into the content browser and search for any article which contains our error message field. Looking at the properties for the three which came up, we can see that we have properly captured the data in question. Since we now have what we need, we can remove the extension from this source. As of this recording, there is not a method in the UI for doing so, nor a published API. While this will likely be changing soon, the best option at this time is to go ahead and view the source's configuration JSON as we did before, find our post-conversion extension, and remove the object which references it from the post-conversion extension's array, leaving the array otherwise intact. We'll go ahead and save and rebuild this time without the extension running. Once those processes are completed, we can check again in the content browser to verify that the mappings are still working correctly, capturing the desired metadata without the extension causing superfluous data from our discovery activity to be stored in the index. Thank you for watching this edition of Coveo Bite Size Learning. 
please share this with your team and subscribe to the Kaveo Insights channel in order to keep your search implementation relevant.